Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, I've got an interesting video. We're going to be talking about a pretty cool new way to approach your tabletop games, and that is basically sharing a list, designing a list for your friend or opponent to play, and uh, them doing the same for you, and how this can apply to a lot of different games. If you guys are new here to the channel, we are giving away another lightsaber that's going to be running all month long and also all through February, so you have plenty of time to enter. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. So uh, we're going to be talking about like new formats of ways to play. And one of the reasons I, I, I do this periodically and I, and I host some alternative formats and, and new kind of expansion type uh, things over on crabock.com is because sometimes, you know, you go for a long time without getting any new product or maybe you only play one faction and, you know, maybe nothing's coming out for your faction. This can be any game, too. Not even the games that I talk about. Like, you know, you might maybe you play X-Wing and, uh, you know, you only play one or two factions and they don't get anything in this wave and it starts to get a little stale for you. Maybe you play Legion and they didn't get anything new in this last wave for the factions that you play or, or Armada. Or maybe you play 40k and, you know, you don't get anything new for the Tau in like a year or something like that. And you're just, you know, you want to try something different. Or maybe you're just getting burnt out and looking for new ways to play. Things like that. <clears throat> um, same thing with Marvel Crisis Protocol. You know, you might find yourself kind of waiting on new stuff, although Marvel Crisis Protocol doesn't usually have that long of a wait on new things. They have stuff coming in all the time, but they're starting to see a little bit of slowdown now too. And I think slowdown is something that's just going to be inevitable, and it's time to kind of look at new ways to approach the game. And, and in the past, I've done this over on crabbock.com. I've got like the AI systems for Legion and Armada. I've got some alternative methods like Secret Fleet for Armada and Ultimate Encounters for, well, at least one Ultimate Encounter so far uh, for Legion. And uh, and I think things like that can be fun, new ways to play the game. And, and it's what we're looking at is another one today. And this is a very, very simple one. It's basically just where you design a list <clears throat> for a friend and they, they turn around and design a list for you. Now, this can be a different way to do things and a fun way to change up game night. Now, all you have to do is pick a friend, say, hey, are you down to try and design a list for me and I'll do the same for you? And if you guys both agree, then go for it. This is great for spouses. This is great for uh, siblings. This is great for people who meet up uh, regularly and play each other well enough uh, to be able to take advantage of this. And one of the cool things about a system like this is that it changes up your whole approach to the game, right? Because now all of a sudden you don't know what you're going to be playing. So you're going to be dealt something and having to make the most of it. It could actually be a really fun type of tournament or, or game day event where everybody's doing something like that. But I think there's a couple of ground rules and that's what I want to talk about today. First ground rule is make sure your opponent understands the intent of what you're trying to do. And what I mean by that is are you trying to come up with like the worst possible list? Uh, because maybe that's something that you do. Like who can take the worst possible list and still win with it? And that that could be okay. That's maybe not my particular cup of tea because there's certain like upgrade combinations and, and synergies that literally do nothing at all. And so then you're just wasting points and then you're pulling out upgrade cards or whatever to, for no purpose whatsoever. Um, but you could try to come up with like the, the, a bad list and to see who could win with a bad list. There's other things where you could try to come up with the best list. And this works better, I think, in a group setting where you come up with a really, really great list. And if like everybody is kind of doing stuff like you get maybe you draw names or you draw straws or something like that, and you get paired up against somebody. At the end of the day, whoever gets the most wins, well, maybe that person gets a prize, but maybe the person who designed the list also gets a prize. So you kind of want to have the best list and be the best player. Uh, I've heard of people doing something along those lines, and I think that's a fun way to do things also, but that probably works better if you're not doing a one-on-one, -on -one, just a, a standalone game. Now, if you are doing just a standalone game, I think there's a couple of ways to approach things. Perhaps doing thematic lists for your opponent. Like, hey, we want to do something maybe from the movies or something from a video game or something from a book or kind of like a dream team kind of uh, pairing or something that should have been or, or something from like a what if. You know, if you're doing like Marvel Crisis Protocol, like you could do like one of the what if team ups or something like that. Like, So there's all kinds of maybe thematic ways to put lists together. But... There's also ways to be like, I want to maybe build a list for for this other person who 
Maybe they don't use a certain type, like maybe they don't use vehicles. Maybe they don't use, they never go more than three core. Maybe they don't like having to have a lot of stormtroopers or something like that. Um, or maybe they never use special forces and you want them to use special forces. Or maybe your opponent always uses pathfinders and you're looking for any excuse you can to get them not to use pathfinders. I don't know, um, but but that, that that's more of a legion uh, thing. But the, the same thing could be said against uh, with with you know uh, X Wing or Armada or or even Marvel Crisis Protocol. Maybe your opponent never plays villains, or maybe your opponent never plays a certain faction, and you want to you know you want to give them the chance to do it. Now this may mean that you have to loan them certain units or miniatures or equipment or things or cards or upgrades or something like that. So go into this making sure that you're not building a list that can't be built. Like, oh, I'm going to go up against you and I'm going to be flying a TIE Swarm, but I only have Rebels, so I hope you have enough TIEs, you know, so you also have to make sure that the stuff is available between both of your collections combined. You also want to make sure that you guys aren't both building like the exact same list for each other. If you build a TIE Swarm for your opponent and they build a TIE Swarm for you, you might quickly run out of TIEs when you thought you had enough. So it might actually be a good idea to build two lists so you have a backup in case the pairing of the two ends up being a complete catastrophe because the goal is to have fun. Uh, another way that you could potentially do a, a list for, for your opponent is to try to do something that is both competitive, good, and a different style of play than they normally go with. Like maybe uh, if it's, for example, X-Wing, maybe you want them to try stealth ships or cloaking devices on ships and you want to try something that they haven't done before uh, and then maybe they'll like it. Like maybe they really like the Empire but have but they don't have any phantoms so you want them to try yours or something like that. Maybe uh, if it's Armada, your opponent's never used a Starhawk but they love the Rebels and you're like, you know, you would love this ship so I'm going to build a list about the Starhawk that kind of features it and and maybe you'll have a good time with it. Maybe that will get you to go ahead and bite the bullet and pick up a Starhawk. Same thing with maybe the Super Star Destroyer, you know. And and then uh, and, and same thing with Legion too. Like maybe they don't use heavies. Maybe they uh, they've never used uh, any Jedi before. And some that could be like, hey, you know what? You should try out the Force in this game because it works cool. Um, and 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 it's a great way to kind of get somebody out of their comfort zone and to try something new that can also be good. And I think if you're doing that, you want to build a list that works. Maybe some upgrades that you don't normally see, but ones that should work with the list. Uh, and, and then I think the last thing uh, or way to do it is as competitive practice is to maybe build a list for your opponent that you really want to play against. Maybe you always run Palpatine and Royal Guards uh, and, and, and you've got force speed on Palpatine and you're just kicking butt everywhere you go. And you're like, yeah, but I don't know how I would do if I faced another Palpatine. And maybe so you build a Palpatine list for your opponent and you want to try to exploit the weakness in the list that you want them to play. Like that's another way to do it. So if you're trying to, you know, gear up uh, competitively, that could be a certain uh, way that you do that. And that applies to just about any game too. You know, you build like the best list you can think of, see if you can beat it. And then look at maybe some mistakes that they make, especially if it's a list that you like to run, you know, look at how they play it. They may play a list that you run differently than you run that list. You know, they may be more aggressive than you. They may be more tactical, focusing on objectives than you are. And you can learn a lot by watching somebody else play your list. And the last thing that I want to talk about is how you approach, like, objective cards and cards that would normally be secret in a build like that. Now, there's two ways. Basically, the straightforward, you either tell them what's, what the secret cards are or you don't. Um, and I think there's merits to both. So in, so in most cases, I would say that the recommended way to do this is to let them pick their own like secret cards. Whether it's, you know, I don't think X-Wing has any, uh, too many, or too many secrets. There's some new stuff coming out where you can put, potentially pull cards from outside of the game, but, but not a whole lot of that. Um, so like for Armada or Legion or, or, uh, or Marvel Crisis Protocol, you know, there is like, like a battle deck or an objective deck or, and things that you, you kind of get ready, uh, or your team tactics cards that you have to pull in from outside of the game that you're, are going to be part of what you're playing. Now, at least in Marvel Crisis Protocol's case, they're common knowledge, so that you can include those. But for like for Armada, if, if I know what objectives you have, I know to pick first or second player. And if I chose those objectives for you, you know, then that could be potentially problematic. So I think... 
I think in a lot of cases, you probably want to just let your opponent look at the list and say, all right, now let me build the, the battle deck or the objective deck that goes along with this one because I need to make sure that you don't know you know, what I might add to this. So like, here's your, here's your plate of macaroni and cheese, but it's up to you whether you want to put a little salt on it or not, you know, salt and pepper, maybe a little garlic powder, you know, like stuff like that. Um, but in some cases it could be thematic, uh, if you wanted to build, let's say I'm going to use Legion as an example. If I wanted to build a Wookiee list for you, um, and maybe I wanted to have Yoda and Chewbacca and I wanted to have Chewbacca's two pip in there because I wanted to see if there was value in that for you. Um, you know, and then I wanted to use some of the Wookiee specific command cards. Well, maybe that would be part of the overall thematic type of build. Maybe you don't go with that. Instead, maybe you were to go with, uh, you know, so, you know, if you didn't choose that, maybe it's like, well, I just want to use Yoda's and the basic ones because I don't want to use those. Right. So I think it's important to kind of establish ground rules. Are, are we going thematic? And maybe if it's a thematic battle, maybe you, you know, you include the cards and all of that and, and all of the, that stuff that should be in the list. Um, especially if it's like Armada, maybe you want to, like, hey, I think we should play a rift based objective because I think this fleet would work well with that. You know, and you can you can you know for fun games, you can kind of you know pick your objective or scenario ahead of time, especially just to see how this list or fleet or army or, or squad works on a specific objective. And uh, and I think you can have a lot of fun doing stuff like that. So I guess my question for you guys at this point is, have you ever designed a list for your opponent and had them do the same for you? Now, I'm not including like tutorial games because those, that's always, you're always designing the list. If you're teaching somebody for the first time, you always kind of go with like an easy introductory type of build for each side uh, to teach them the basics. But I'm talking about an experienced player. Have you ever played a game with somebody where you guys each do each other's lists and if so, how did it work out for you? And uh, and if you like the idea, stay tuned. You might see a battle report, something like that, in the future. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed what we were talking about today. Um, if you do, check out some of the links that are out, down in the description below. We've got a link to our Discord. I'd love to hear your thoughts and continue this discussion over on the Discord as well. And also, uh, we got links to social media. If you want, like, a Bad Dice Prison shirt, you know, if you want to bring your dice in warm or bring them in cold. To teach them a lesson, you got to put them in the bad dice prison. <laughs> but uh, we got links for all kinds of merch and all, all of that stuff down in the description below. I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me today. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Couldn't do this without you. So thank you for your continued support. I will be back next time. Same bat time, same bat channel, but I'm not Batman. Now, I'll leave you with this. If you ever get into a fight with Batman, you're going to lose. Unless, of course, maybe you're Superman. I think Superman could take Batman. Because Batman, is not, he's not always... Gonna